Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you again. Um, I'm going to be doing a few things today. The first thing is to read a book called Jack and the Beanstalk. It is a classic, but this is a kind of a fun retelling by Richard Walker and Niam Sharkey. And after that, I'm going to just discuss with you. I'm going to show you some rocks I found, which are really nice. Give you a riddle or two and tell you about an activity that I hope that we can all do together. So let's begin the book, Jack and the Beanstalk. One of the reasons why I chose Jack and the Beanstalk is I know that at this time of year, a lot of people are growing seeds or beans and things like that. And this is an experiment that went kind of crazy. I'm not going to start by saying that Jack was lazy. When there was an adventure in the offing, he was not lazy at all. But most of the time, he just did a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Jack lived with his mom and Daisy the cow in a tumble-down farmhouse a little way out of town. Jack's mom liked to do just a little bit of this and a little bit of that as well. They didn't have very much money, but they didn't much care. Then one day, there was nothing left to eat, not even a crust of old bread, and no money left either to buy anything. It's no good, Jack, his mom said. We'll have to sell poor Daisy. You had better get up early tomorrow morning and take her to market. Make sure you get a good price for her. Jack knew better than to argue. Besides, he was very hungry. So the next day, he got up at sunrise and set off down the lane with Daisy in tow. He had not gone far when he came around a corner and bumped into a funny little man. The man was wearing a big baggy jacket with big baggy pockets. Good morning to you, said the man. That's a nice looking cow you have there. Do you fancy doing a swap for her? I know what happens. Jack remembered what his mom had told him. So he asked, what will you give me in exchange? These, declared the funny little man, and plunging a hand deep into one of his pockets, he pulled out six plump beans. Those, asked Jack. Yes, said the funny little man. These, don't think these are just ordinary beans. Oh, no, these are magic beans. But you will have to be careful with them. I've lost the instructions for them, so I'm not sure what they do. Well, there was nothing Jack loved better than magic. So he handed over Daisy and took the beans and hurried home. What do you think his mom is going to say? What would your mom say? Let's find out. As soon as he reached the back door, Jack burst into the kitchen and proudly threw the beans down on the table. What's this? exclaimed his mom. Oh dear, thought Jack. They're magic Beans, Mom, I swapped them for Daisy. At least we've got something to eat. Well, we will have when they're grown. Jack's mom was furious. She went white in the face and shouted and stamped. Then she threw open the window and flung the beans outside. That night, Jack and his mom went to bed feeling miserable and hungry. It didn't work out for him so far. But in the garden, things began to happen. The beans slipped down through cracks in the ground. Their roots wriggled deep into the earth and shoots pushed upward. They burst through the hard crust of the soil and twisting and tangling together, they grew high into the sky. They kept on growing and growing until they reached the land of the clouds. Then, a long, wiry tendril reached down to the house and tapped on Jack's bedroom window. Who's that? Jack yawned. Oh, he saw strange shadows in the moonlit window, and not sure whether this was a dream or a real adventure. He padded across the room, drew back his curtains, and there, bending and swaying in the moonlight, was the most enormous beanstalk he had ever seen. I wonder where the top of it goes to, Jack said to himself. There was only one way to find out. 
Without stopping to think twice, he clambered over the windowsill and started to climb. Soon the house was just a tiny dot far below, and still he made his way upward. I wonder if you would have climbed that beanstalk. I had to think about that. Finally, he reached the land of the clouds and stepped off the beanstalk onto the fluffy gray ground. In the distance, he could see a huge castle. Jack walked straight up to it and knocked on the door. He heard the clank of keys being turned, the rumble of bars being slid back, and the rattle of chains being unfastened. Then, at last, the huge door creaked open a crack, and he saw a little old woman peering at him by the light of a candle. You can't come in, she whispered. He'll be back soon. Go away. Please, Jack begged. I'm a stranger here and starving hungry. Can't I just pop in quickly for something to eat? The woman looked at him more closely and saw that he was a nice looking lad with a ready smile. Very well, you can come in for a minute, but don't let him catch sight of you. I wonder who she's talking about. Who shouldn't catch sight of Jack? Well, we were to find out. Who's he, asked Jack, as they made their way along the dusty castle corridors to the big kitchen. Lining the walls were mounds of huge, bulging sacks, which jingled as Jack brushed against them. The giant, of course, if he catches you, he'll eat you for sure. He's got a foul temper, so you'd better keep out of his way. Hide among the sacks if you hear him coming. Then, just as she finished speaking, there was a crashing of heavy footsteps outside the room. Jack only just managed to hide behind a heap of sacks when the door burst open and in barged the giant. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of a stinky man. Where is he, woman? Where are you hiding him? The giant sniffed his way around the room until he came close to where Jack was hiding. Oh, don't be silly, said the old woman. All you can smell is the stew I've made. I was trying a bowl of it to make sure it was good enough for you. Would you like some? Soon the giant had slurped his way through an enormous bowl of stew. He belched loudly ah, and then demanded, Fetch me my goose. I want some more gold. It's very big. He's a giant. The old woman slipped out of the room and was soon back cradling a huge, very gloomy looking bird in her arms. Peeping out from his hiding place, Jack watched as the goose began to lay eggs, each one made of pure gold. As each egg appeared, the giant put it into a giant egg box, and then he demanded, Now fetch me my harp, I want some music. Once again, the old woman bustled out of the room and came back holding an exquisite harp made of pure gold, of course. Even the strings were golden. Play, harp, play, shouted the giant. And if by, if by magic, the room was filled with the most beautiful, gentle music as the strings began to vibrate all by themselves. Soon the giant fell asleep and his snuffling and <sighs> snoring echoed around the room. I think those were magic beans. Jack crept out from his hiding place and quietly began to drag one of the bulging sacks full of gold coins across the kitchen floor. It was very heavy and it jingled as he pulled it. It jingled and jingled, but the giant did not stir. Jack heaved and heaved and dragged the sack right out of the castle, across the cloud and back to the top of the beanstalk. The sack was too heavy for him to carry any further, so he left it there and he slid quickly down. When he reached home, Jack found his mom staring up at the beanstalk and scratching her head. Rope, cried Jack as he sprang to the ground. He ran off to the shed, came back a few moments later with great coils wrapped around him, and then he set off back up the beanstalk. After a while, he felt the rope become loose and he knew that the sack had reached the ground. So, oops, I skipped this part, sorry. At the top of the beanstalk, Jack tied one end of the rope to the stem and the other to the sack of gold. 
Then he started to lower the sack. After a while, he felt the rope become loose and he knew that the sack had reached the ground safely and that his mom had untied it. Jack headed back to the kitchen to fetch another sack. As he crept past the giant, the goose looked up hopefully and whispered, can I come too? I hate it up here. You wouldn't need to take the sack then. I could lay you as many golden eggs as you want. So Jack picked her up and he ran out of the room. In the corridor, he bumped into the old woman. Can I come with you as well? She asked. Of course, said Jack. Here, you take the goose and I'll go back for the harp. I don't think they're going to get away without a fight. Let's find out. But as Jack picked up the harp, it suddenly cried out, What's going on? Who are you? Help! Help! Jack raced out of the kitchen just as the giant woke up, saw what was happening, and began to give chase. Faster and faster ran Jack. Closer and closer came the giant. As he reached the top of the beanstalk, Jack could feel the giant's hand on the hairs of his neck. Quick, he shouted. The old woman started slithering down with the goose. Jack slithered down behind her with the harp. They could hear the giant shouting and swearing as he tried to follow them. Uh-oh. He was saying naughty words. Don't say naughty words at home. The beanstalk bent and swayed wildly first to the left and then to the right, but the old woman and Jack reached the ground safely. Jack grabbed the rope, he pulled and he pulled, until he could see the giant hanging on for dear life, glaring down at him. And then he let go. Boing! The beanstalk shot upright like an enormous catapult. Unable to hold on any longer, the giant flew off the end. He soared away into space and was never seen again. And as far as I know, he's still there. The old woman went inside to make a pot of tea. Mom put the golden harp on the kitchen dresser and Jack made the magic goose a special hut. He put the sack of gold in the cellar and took out a coin whenever he needed to buy something. And the last time I went to visit, the harp played jigs and reels, so we all had a merry dance. The end. So that had a happy ending, even though it was a little scary. I don't know if you guys were nervous. I was a little bit nervous, even though I've read it a few times. So I'm gonna show you a few things that I found in my travels. Um, I went to the beach and I found this beautiful rock. Now, the book that we read, If You Find a Rock, one of the rocks is a wishing rock because it has a line that goes all the way around it. This is a wishing rock. So I'm gonna make some wishes. I can't tell you because I want them to come true, but there, it's a fun rock. And then I also found this really interesting rock here. And what's interesting I find about this rock is that you see these little prints? Those are from shells that used to be stuck to it and they're really beautiful. So they left their, they left their mark on this rock. And I'm going to read you a riddle that has nothing to do with anything except that I like riddles and see if you can guess what it is. What has six feet, three tails, three tails, and eats in a tree? I'm going to show you a picture. There's a clue. There. You guys know what it is? I'll repeat it. Six feet, three tails, and eats in a tree. one papa bird and two baby birds. So they each have two feet, which makes six feet. They each have one tail, which makes three tails. And they like to eat in the tree. Maybe I'll give you another um, riddle on another day. And the last thing I wanna talk about, I'm gonna show you something. Um, this is an envelope. You've probably seen these before. I think we've had them in the classroom. And this one has a stamp on it. And I think Eider will be excited because this is a frog stamp. And the frog stamp, um, everybody's going to get one of these because I'm going to send everyone a letter from me and Kevin. So there will be a letter for you in a big envelope from me and Kevin. And also in the envelope, um, I'm going to include some really cool paper. I'll cut it up because it's a little big. 
so you guys can make your own beautiful collages or do what you want with the paper. You can fold it, you can glue it, and maybe we can share those. And I'm also gonna give you your own envelope with a stamp on it with the address of one of your classmates. That's gonna be your pen pal. It's a secret right now. You don't know who your pen pal is gonna be, but you're gonna get an um, envelope with an address already on it, and you're gonna have your parents help you either draw a picture or write a little note to your friend. Um, seal it up, throw it in your mailbox, and a postal carrier will take it to your friend. And we'll get to share and kind of connect with one another that way. So I hope, I hope that, that, that that works, and I hope that you are able to do it that would be really fun. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again on Wednesday. I'm going to read another story, and then on Friday, Kevin and I will Zoom with you. Bye-bye.